Okay, I've mixed up my main mixture. Now I'm pouring in the bin whatever powder that is. Can't pronounce it. I think it's benzoin. Benzin powder. Not real sure. Okay, mix that in real good. Now I'm going to split my batch off. Two separate containers. Okay, so into one, I'm adding a titanium dioxide. Into the other, I'm adding a little tiny bit of titanium dioxide, orange mica, and some orange pigment. I find that the mica by itself doesn't always give the steadiest of colors. It will fade pretty good, so I always add in a little bit of pigment in with my mica, which I'm going to need some more of. <laughs> Here's the orange. Okay, I've mixed everything up. Sorry, this camera's being wonky. Okay, now I'm going to start pouring stuff in. Here's the white first. Oh, I need my clips. I forgot about my clips. Okay. I need to get my clips out real bad. The white is starting to thicken up pretty good, so I need to pour this relatively fast. I found that, um, Anything that is kind of like a cookie base or a pie crust or anything like that thickens up a little faster, so just be wary. Doing some elaborate swirl with a fragrance like that is probably not going to work. Especially if you have a vanilla color stabilizer in it like I do. So there's a good bit of it. Just going to bang this down. Now I'm going to pour some of my melt and pour in. I'm going to pour some more of my white in. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and put all the rest of the melt and pour in because of the reason I just mentioned. And I'm going to pour it up high so it goes pretty deep. This fragrance really is amazing. I have smelled a lot of peachy fragrances that I didn't really think captured the true essence of a real peach. It really just smelled fake. Not so with this one. It actually smells like a real peach. I'm hoping that the powder 
will stabilize that smell really well. Okay, so this is what the first half of this looks like. And now I have to let this sit a while, and this is something else to note when you have a melt and pour and cold process. So you need to let it sit because the melt and pour inside, like I said before, will try to bubble up and come to the surface if it gets too hot. So I'm going to let this sit about 30 minutes before I come and put the top on. Here we are again. I've actually waited about an hour. Now, I haven't been letting my piping sit for that long, but um, I have been waiting that long. I went and ate some lunch and such. Um, this is the color I have chosen for my piping, my uh, lattice pie crust that I'll be doing on the top. And then for the middle, this is the color I have chosen. So I'm going to start piling this on. And it's still a little bit runny, but I'm not piping this. I'm just kind of scooping it on. It's supposed to kind of have a pie filling effect. And then before I add more you know, I'll let this sit a little while before I put the peaches in. Now let me tell you what I did for the peaches. That way you're not trying to find a peach mold if you want to make a soap similar. I used a mold that I bought from a friend, um, but I, I've heard you can get them at Walmart. It's like an ice cube tray for citrus slices. And I went ahead and just used that citrus slice mold as my peach mold, and I'll just be turning the side that looks like a lemon or a lime down. So it still looks like a wedge, but doesn't have that, um, that kind of ripply look, you know, and they make it look like it has seeds and stuff like that. I'll show you a close-up after I finish putting this on. Ugh, it feels like forever since I've made a soap making video. I don't like to make soap making videos, um, of soaps I've already made. That just always feels so boring to me. It's like, you've already seen me make that. If you want to see me make a, one of those soaps, just go back and watch one of the other videos. So, I haven't made a new design in a while. I have another wholesale order I'm finishing up. So, that's why. That will be my last wholesale order I accept for the year because I am going to be really, really, really busy. Soap makers have to start really, really early on Christmas projects and such. So I have to go ahead and start actually getting ready for Thanksgiving and Christmas in September. And then, uh, in a couple of days here, I will actually be moving. I know if some of y'all have watched The Royal Life, which yes, it is live now that that channel is live. Um, if y'all haven't watched The Royal Life, then you don't really know what's going on, but Royalty Slo Soaps is actually moving tomorrow. Dinacat is crying. <laughs> She's sad, see? She doesn't want me to leave. Um, but I'm not moving, just my business. I've outgrown my house, really. I think my parents think I have invaded their space at this point, which I totally have. <laughs> I'm just going to film this one. You can see I got the topping in. So I'm going to place the peaches so that they look like they've been put in randomly. You know, put them in different ways and stuff. When in reality, they're going to be kind of placed purposefully so that each bar has a little bit. Um, I'm just putting them down. You can see uh, that these are the lime wedges, like what I was talking about. I'm just putting them in gently because this piping is still pretty runny, runnier than I normally work with. It smells so good. Mm, mm, mm. Love the way it smells. 
And then I'm going to put the other ones on the other side there. So here's the lime wedge. You can see what I was talking about, about the indentations and everything. So if you want to use it for a peach, you just flip it over. See, so it's still smooth on this side. And of course this is kind of a banged up one here. But that's how you make it look like a peach instead, or any other, really any other fruit slice that you need that isn't citrus. I have my piping ready. I'm just going to start over here. I'm going to go all the way across. Make sure you don't squeeze too hard because you really don't want that line to break if you can help it. Now there's lots and lots of different ways to pipe cakes and pies and stuff, but this is the way that I like to do mine. So what's going to end up happening is you're going to have four rows across the top this way. It's okay if, you know, the piping breaks when you cut it because, you know, there's a little air pocket between it and the soap. That's okay. It's still going to look really good. Now I'm doing this back side that I know you can't see over there. Then go ahead when you're done and make it look even by doing the ends too. I'll just put a little line right here, just like so. Okay, now you see I have my mold marked, which really helps with this. And you're going to start at one end, and you're going to go across at every mark, and you're going to meet the one on the other side. So, just like this, you're just going to meet the mark on the other side. So, each bar will have one, essentially. Doesn't have to be perfect. Mine never is. I'm sure that a baker person would tell me that this piping has a specific name. I don't really know what it is. <laughs> Once you've gone this way, then you're going to come back over to this side and you're going to do the exact same thing the other way. Oops! And that's why you want to keep squeezing so that that doesn't happen. Okay, so you're just going to keep coming across, just like this. Now that I have piped everything, I'm going to take that little bit that I had left of my melt and pour. And I'm not going to heat this up very hot because I don't want it to, you know, just run all over the place. And I'm just going to try to drizzle it in the cracks. This might still be a little hot yet. I might have to stop pouring this. And this is just going to look, in my opinion, like a peach cobbler where they kind of have some gooey, runny stuff in between the, the crust and the filling. So that's kind of the point of this, is to make the goo, as it were. Yeah, I'm going to let this sit a little while longer and then I'm going to top it off with a little tiny bit of gold glitter. I have made the most delightfully runny little mess, but this should look pretty nice once it's cut. Remember, it, it doesn't matter as much what it looks like in the mold, because I'm not selling them by the loaf, I'm selling them by the bar. So you can see some of the melt and pour is dripping off. But all in all, I think these look pretty nice. Uh, the piping it leaves much to be desired, but, you know, I'll take it, and um, hopefully it'll look really nice when we cut it tomorrow. And good morning, everyone. We're back. I apologize in advance 
for the noise. What? Does it have to be completely quiet? No, but a dull roar would be suitable. So this is what it looks like inside. As I'm smelling it, I'm smelling less peach, which I kind of thought would happen, but, um... Cake. Yeah, it smells kind of like cake. I'm hoping that that peach scent might return. It's a Some of it small. smells like peach. Yeah, some of it smells like peach. The melt and pour part really smells like peach, but I think it kind of faded in the rest of it, which, you know. It still smells good. Still smells really good. Still smells enough like peach for me able to still be call it calling it a uh, southern peach cobbler. Pretty sure it looks like it. It looks really pretty. It looks yeah. like cobbler. Yeah. And it, it still smells a little bit cobblery in my opinion. Well thanks guys very much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the making and cutting of southern peach cobbler. It smells really really good. This will be in the Etsy shop on September the 5th, and I have 32 bars, 34 bars, sorry, 34 bars, so quite a few of these smells really, really great, and um, I hope you guys, again, enjoyed, and I will see you all next time. Bye for now.